During the darkest days of the Civil War, one man personified the Union cause, Abraham Lincoln. A wounded but reunited nation honored him in this timeless memorial. And every year, millions come to this civic temple. But few know the artist who created this extraordinary likeness of our 16th president. Meet Daniel Chester French, the sculptor of the man who saved the nation. Daniel Chester French was born in Exeter, New Hampshire on April 20th, 1850, 76 years and a day after the start of the American Revolution. His family later moved to Cambridge and then conquered Massachusetts. French enrolled in MIT with less than successful results, and within a year, he was back on the family farm. But through it all, young Daniel had a passion he recalled years later. I have been whittling and carving things from wood and gypsum, or even from turnips. My father spoke to Miss Alcott as the artist of the community, and she immediately offered to give me modeling clay and tools. I lost no time in harnessing up the horse and driving over for them. May Alcott was the youngest sister of Louisa May Alcott, who wrote the classic novel Little Women. The Alcotts and their neighbor Ralph Waldo Emerson were part of the great artistic and literary community in Concord. In this atmosphere, it didn't take long for Daniel French to demonstrate his natural talent. While still a teenager, he executed this bust of his father, Henry Flagg French. Three years later, he got the commission that launched his career. As the centennial of the American Revolution approached, the citizens of Concord decided on a commemorative statue and made an unusual offer to their young local sculptor. They would pay for the studio and materials, but no fee for his design. French accepted the commission and literally turned old Civil War cannons into a seven-foot bronze statue that bore the words of Emerson's Concord Hymn. By the rude bridge that arched the flood, their flag to April's breeze unfurled. Here, once the embattled farmers stood, and fired the shot heard round the world. Since its unveiling, French's Minuteman has made its own way around the world, becoming an American icon. But French missed the ceremony. He had gone to explore his art in Florence, Italy. On his return to America, French created sculptures for a series of government buildings, helped by the fact that his father was Assistant Secretary of the Treasury. At the age of 29, the young sculptor created a bust of Ralph Waldo Emerson, then 76 years old. On its unveiling, Emerson approved, saying, That is the face that I shave. As French's stature grew, he received prominent commissions, including the statue of John Harvard, founder of the famed college. There were no portraits to draw upon, so French had free reign. Another statue, that of the late Secretary of War Louis Cass, presented a different problem. As French was criticized for being perhaps too accurate in the large dimensions of the subject. French went through many changes in the coming years, leaving Boston for New York. At the age of 38, he married his first cousin, Mary French. A year later, she gave birth to their daughter, Margaret, who would become an artist in her own right. French's reputation continued to grow with works like Republic, a colossal statue that dominated Chicago's World's Columbian Exposition in 1893. It was the first World's Fair, and it inspired the City Beautiful movement that would unify the fine and decorative arts with city planning. Though well-established with a studio in New York, French needed a place to find solace and inspiration. He found it in the Berkshires. Here, he built the summer residence and studio he would call Chesterwood. Everything was designed to further his art. High windows gave French the ideal, even light to illuminate his sculptures, unmarred by hard shadows. While exploring Chesterwood, you will discover French's love of nature. He sculpted his own landscape to fulfill his vision of an artist's retreat. Here, during summer months, along forested walkways, you can usually find works by contemporary artists who come here seeking the same inspiration and solitude that Daniel Chester French experienced 
a century before. Daniel Chester French was a master of his medium, working in clay, plaster, marble, and bronze. He defined the sculptor as a man nine-tenths mechanic and one-tenth poet, though few mechanics create works so iconic that we know them before we see them. We took a trip to Italy for the very first time. We went to Florence and we saw amazing sculptures, things that you only read about in books, but nothing compares to the Lincoln Memorial. It's just awe-inspiring, it's haunting. Daniel Chester French lived through and largely shaped what many regard as the golden age of American sculpture. His legacy is found around the nation and beyond. Daniel Chester French's final work is called Andromeda. While sculpting it, he would sometimes use a small railway track to move it into the natural light outside the studio. Toward the end of his life, he told an interviewer, I still believe that the beauty of woman is beauty at its best and highest. Andromeda remains where it began, in the studio of Chesterwood, as his final statement on his favorite subject. Enjoy your day at Chesterwood. As Daniel Chester French said, I spend six months of the year up there. That is heaven. New York is, well, New York.